cluster of varieties that is used in normal contexts, let's say. So the, 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 the entire situation is very much split up between two levels. Then our says what happens in the uh, in the following centuries essentially is that the constellation is filled out. So you have these two levels and gradually you get the emergence of language varieties, lects if you wish, that are situated somewhere in between the two, uh, the two original ones. The base dialects and the high level standard language. That would be things like regional, sta regional standards or colloquial forms of the language, maybe with a little bit of local accent and so on. All of that is stratificationally situated between the two extremes. Okay, you get that picture. Then uh, the next thing that happens, says our, and it's only happening at this point in a number of languages, is that the whole pyramid, or if you wish, the spectrum of variation, becomes narrower, so you get this. Oh yes, terminologically, this is what, what you might call diaglossia, not uh, diglossia, but diaglossia because you have a spectrum. Um, and then it, uh, it retracts. And that's the situation in which you have dialect loss, because the original dialects, the ones that were at the bottom, disappear. You still have variation, but the range of variation becomes narrower. And this is, of course, also what people could see as a form of standardization, because the entire spectrum moves in the direction of the standard language. And that is more or less the, um, the, the, the standard view that people have of the evolution of standard. Standard language emerges, the spectrum gets the continuum gets filled out, and then gradually the original variation goes away in the direction of the upper strata. What uh, Tor Christiansen, and his work primarily on Danish, has added to that is the suggestion that after that process of, stand, of standardization, there would be something like a postmodern process of destandardization of or informalization by which the, the original position of the standard lang language as a reference point in a certain way becomes weaker. Um, however, in, when, when he talks about that, when he writes about that, there's a whole literature about these processes in language. He uses two different terms. One term he uses is demotization, and that is defined, and, and this is more or less a quote, as the ideological upgrading of low status language to best status language. So that is in circumstances where you used to use a very standardized, maybe, let's say, formal type of language, you can now use forms of language that maybe a generation ago belonged to the colloquial speech or colloquial levels of the language. So the old colloquial language, language becomes a new standard. Another term that he uses is destandardization. And that is more or less uh, a development or a possible development whereby the established standard language loses its position as the one and only best language. Okay. You should now be puzzled. You should be puzzled by the question, what exactly is the difference between these two things? Demotization and destandardization. Right. Many people are puzzled. And many people have been working with these terms and trying to find examples of things that fit into one of the categories and examples that fit into the other categories. 
but it's not entirely clear what precisely is meant uh, by these terms. So that's where I want to uh, introduce a suggestion for dealing with phenomena like this. And I'd like to suggest that what we need to do is to use a lectometrical research, lectometrical method, uh, where, as I mentioned earlier, a lect is something that generalizes over dialects, uh, regiolects, and, so, and so on. And then dialectometry, sociolectometry, and so on, uh, can be generalized into lectometry. What is that? Well, that is the quantitative study of linguistic distances between lects. Because notice that if you take a representation like this, there is a spatial metaphor there. There's a spatial metaphor dealing with distances. So let's try to measure those distances. So linguistic distances between lects uh, synchronically, and if we can do that, then we can see how big the spectrum actually is of the different varieties, and whether diachromically it actually shrinks or not. So that would be the 